Hello everyone, my name is Bill. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to look at how to build a form validation uh, with React Native. So the end goal is we having a, a, a form with certain validation, and if a validation fails, we want that particular input to be focused. We're going to use controller. So if you're not familiar with uh, controller, uh, have a look at the syntax before we, probably before we're getting started. Uh, down to this section. Basically, the capability of controller is allow you to isolate that particular input uh, without really re-rendering on the component level. And the other benefit is we can actually uh, focus on that particular input that I have problem with. So let's get started. Um, so I have a little bit uh, styling already set up, and I uh, I have installed React hook form ready. So let's import uh, hook form to start with. Use form. And we have hook form. So the next bit, uh, we want to give it some label, I guess. So we want to start with the view. Uh, where is it? Text. So we're just going to keep this really, really, really simple. Um, the idea is. Uh, teaching you how to use a controller, how to manage new, your form, input validation, and how do you focus uh, in a particular field that have issue. Uh, let's format this. What's wrong with this? Oh, I haven't started. My bad. So get that running first. Cool. No, it should work. Nice. I did have some sort of styling uh, the preset, so give a nice uh, and good looking form and give that React Hook form a colorful theme as well. So let's apply uh, the style. We style the label. Oops. We should see something cool. Now we got a first, the first and the last. Now first and. The Let's give another input as well. Let's give it last name. And the last one, we want to give it a, a button, I suppose. I will sort out the inputs as well. Uh, the input probably is the most important part, so that's why I'm leaving them a little bit later. Ooh, I probably can just close this. Yes. And then we want to give it a color, which is white. And give it a title for button. And we want to have some actions, which when user press the button. Cool. So next thing we want to set up uh, React hook form. So we want to give it a uh, initiate the hook form. And then we want to input the controller. So this is the main boy we're going to play this time. Uh, also controller we need the control it's the, the idea I give the name controller it's like a, it's like a game pad you know so you need to kind of wild them a while that up before you can actually using them cool so let's get the controller in place being the lazy let's give another one in here hopefully ooh, something's already broken that's fine because we need to give it a handle submit in here and then give it an on submit function. That should give us some of the data once we've successfully submitted. The other thing we probably want to keep keep an eye on is gonna be the arrows. So we want to log them to the console. Cool. Ooh, and define is not object, so ooh, and define is not object. Why is that problem? Oh, that's right. My bad. We need to give controller a name, and then we still need to slotting the component inside. So in this example, we're gonna use the render, uh, which is React Hook Form version six feature. You can use as as well, 
but I guess uh, with Renda, everything is more predictable, um, just more transparent. Like you know exactly what we actually try to pass to your uh, child component. So in here, we want to use the text input, and we want to use spread operator to spread all the props. So uh, you're probably wondering what what type of props that actually React Hook form is passing down. Uh, well, I'm not using TypeScript, so I can't see the type. So really, it's just on change, uh, on blur, and value. So that kind of give you uh, much more flexibility in terms if you want to building, you know, if you're using some external component that doesn't have value, doesn't have on change. Uh, this is actually a good example because I believe uh, text component is on text change, on change, on text change. Yes. So we're definitely going to use this to updating the value. So we want to use in props. Uh, Props dot on change, not on change text, on change value. I'm doing this from memory. I mean, most of the time I'm building, you know, around webs. Uh, so React Native is probably more, not my expertise area. So we're gonna give it a try anyhow. Cool. So this should work. Oh well. Why is this still not displaying anything? Let's get rid of that. All right, cool. That's okay. Nice, nice. Uh, we got a first name. We got a last name. The only thing, the style is crap. We can't see anything on the screen. So we want to give a little bit of style on this component. So let's go style equal style store input. Sorry, I do make a Quite a few, quite a few mistakes. Not a professional video uh, tutorial um, person. I just try my best in here, and let's give it a style in here. This is something I pretty pretty fine as well. So it looks a bit nicer, a bit like a real hook form thing. Voila! So we got something already on the screen. Uh, if nothing goes wrong, we should uh, we should see some console logging on the final submit. Let's go. Yay. So we already having a successful submit as we can see in here. Now the next step we want to add in some validation rules. Now that frequent question people asking me, oh so how do you add in validation? Uh, come on, you gotta read the doc. Uh let's have a look at the doc together. Very easy. Let's jump into the controller section. If you scroll down, then you will see there is a rules, attributes, and the validation is exactly the same as register, which I have in an example in here, and then you have a code sandbox dedicated for that example as well. So not to be panicking, and if you're using schema validation from Resolver, then you wouldn't have to worry about this. But for the sake of the simplicity of this tutorial, let's using rules. Uh, let's give it a true. We can we can leave it a message as well. You know what? Let's do that. This is required. Beautiful. No spelling mistake, right? Required. Beautiful. Let's do the same thing in here. Cool. Now we try to submit the form. See if we're getting some kind of error because we actually console logging in the error in here. Voila! Works. Fantastic. So we're already having a, a, a nice form validation uh, for this form. So the next thing we want to do is we want to give a user a better experience. If something goes wrong, we want the focus to be on that particular field, uh, rather than, you know, if you have a large field, uh, large form, the input could potentially uh, be outside of the, the view pool. So, you know, user can get the confused, right? I've done everything right, there's no error message, but actually the error input is actually on the top of the view. So, in order to do that, let's have a look at the doc. I mean, I spend, I mean, not I, and we spend a lot of time on the doc. So, uh, everything should be documented down in the documentation. So, if you find something that is confusing, doesn't make sense, the first thing you should go log on the doc, uh, have a look, have a read. If it doesn't make sense, then jump onto GitHub 
asking a question in discussion, then I'll try my best to follow up. So this is basically uh, the props that you can need on focus. What it does is, if there is a problem with the input, we will run the on on focus callback. Uh, in this case, this allowed us to do a lot of things uh, when there was error. Okay, let's go. Uh, sh show this. Show that. Nice. All right. So we gonna have a, a callback in here. We're not doing anything just for, just for now. So the important things in order for us to focus that input, we want to get the ref. So we want to set up the ref. So we want to give it a first name here. First name input ref. I'm not the best person for giving uh, you know net variables, but makes sense to me. So it's good enough. I mean, if you this is probably something you don't have to do if you're building uh, with web. Because if you register that particular input, then a React hook form can automatically actually hooks on that input. But every time you're using a controller, that means you're actually using something that is external. So you will have to kind of wild this up uh, manually. Last name, uh, input ref. Nice. Now let's wire this up. Uh, so we can jump into here, just go like this. First name, and then we want to give that one to here. Last name. Cool. So now what we want to check is we want to check if the ref is actually being set correctly. Uh, let's do a stupid console log. If we cons submit the button, do we see that? Yes, we definitely got the ref in here. Sorry, the console log is pretty long. And we can't even into to escape so so be it we want to do the same thing down in here as well but this time we want to use the last name all right so let's the to folks that partic particular input is actually relatively easy so you just go um, dot current and I believe oh, focus that should that should do it I think let's do that for the last name okay cool now let's try that out. Uh, if I actually have filled some stuff in here and then I believe I'm, I got that right and I keep submit, boom, we got the focus right as well. Cool. I think I'm gonna wrap up with this video then. This is exactly uh, what I want to to show you guys how to build React uh, native uh, form validation. Well, the other approach uh, we call a Actually, let me let me just introduce in the second method. I'm not recommending it, but that's another way for you to do that as well. So it's basically you have a text input, and then you have on change text on text on change and on text change on change text. Sorry. So you can actually register your input in here via customer register. Now, there's only one problem with this approach. Um, let's just call it Bill. Um, uh, yes, I haven't fulfilled this. Uh, set value, yes. The only problem with this approach is actually when you want to reset the entire form. Um, because you, you kind of treat that, you know, the, the whole register process as like a virtual input system in the memory. So it doesn't have any kind of reference uh, connected to that particular input. So when you want to actually reset the entire form, it's not going to play nicely. Uh, so I would still recommend you to using controller unless uh, you, you want something, you know, really quick and easy. And that would work as well. Let's just quickly try that. Format this nicely, and uh, let's go. Uh, where is that bloody input? Yes, it's here. So if I type something in here, there, do a submit, see, we'll go all the the entire form. Cool. 
I think that's everything I want to go through, and uh, I hope you find this useful if you're using React Native for building forms, and hopefully you see the power and the simplicity of uh, when you're using with React Hook form, not just give you know building form a lot easier, also give user uh, much better experience in terms of focus management. So yeah, thank you. If you have any questions, uh, leave all the questions down below in the in the you know uh, YouTube discussion section. And if something really confusing or doesn't make sense, feel free, feel free to jump on GitHub. Uh, I think I check on GitHub every single day, so you can leave a question on the discussion section as well. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, see you.